in the fight. Rules of the bout with our unofficial ringside scorer, Harold Letterman. The Kasim Umba Saku Pao fight is scheduled for 10 rounds using the, using the New York State rules that you see on your screen. Jim, real quick, the four criteria that the judges will use to score each individual round, clean punching, effective aggressiveness, ring generalship, and defense with a strong emphasis on clean, effective punching. Jim. All right, Harold, you can talk all night about the horrific background from which Kasim Uma has somehow emerged. Suffice to say, he was at age seven, kidnapped from a tiny town in northern Uganda by rebel militia, forced for 10 years to fight in a civil war not of his choosing, originally in the rebel militia, then forced to fight on the government side. Eventually, he became an amateur boxer, partially for the purpose of trying to get out of Uganda on an amateur trip to the United States. He defected and has been here fighting ever since. Now, Larry, there is a congressional-backed effort to get him back to normal relations with the Ugandan government so that he can bring his grandmother here to the United yeah, States. The, the Black Caucus and several congressmen from both the Democratic and Republican parties have joined hands in trying to enable him to go back home. But can they accept a deserter and with, with high praise uh, is he going to set an example for others from that troubled country? And the challenge for his handlers has been to try to keep the emotional backdrop of his horrendous personal life out of his ring life so that he can continue to concentrate and perform. They believe that it was the difficulty with his grandmother which bedeviled him and caused him to fail in his effort against Carmison a year ago. And now here comes Saku Powell of Brooklyn. And Emmanuel, you're always talking about the importance of a deep amateur background in the sport. That may be one of Powell's big advantages here. But also his last fight he fought in, down in Memphis on the same card with Wright and Taylor. He fought a southpaw then, which could have been a good tune-up for this fight here. A very good southpaw who he stopped in the 10th round. And uh, in training at the Crunk Gym when uh, we had Jermaine there, he also boxed with Jermaine Taylor on a very good top-notch level and also with the southpaw Andy Lee. So I feel that he's very prepared for this fight at this point in time. Jim, there once was a famous bullfighter, believe it or not, from Brooklyn named Sidney Franklin. He has to be the bullfighter tonight against the very busy Uma. Manuel mentioned the relationship to Jermaine Taylor. Powell almost made it to the Olympic trials final against Taylor, but was disqualified in his semifinal bout for roughhouse tactics. It was regarded as an open question as to whether Powell or Taylor would have won that Olympic trials final and gone on to Sydney. As it was, it was Taylor who emerged from the Olympics to become the star. Powell now chasing his image and those of other fighters in this weight neighborhood. Let's go to Michael Buffer now for the official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the theater here at Madison Square Garden, New York City, where tonight, DeBella Entertainment is proud to present an evening of world-class professional boxing for your entertainment. Sponsored by StubHub, where fans buy and sell tickets. The first bout brought to you in association with Golden Boy Promotions and Pelts Boxing Promotions. These bouts are sanctioned by the New York State Athletic Commission. At ringside, the three judges assigned scoring the contest on the 10-point system will be Dick Flaherty, Tony Paolillo, and Steve Weisfeld. And when the bell rings, inside the ring, the referee in charge is Eddie Claudio. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from Madison Square Garden, 10 rounds of boxing. This is in the light middleweight division. <laughs> Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing red, official weight, 153 pounds. Professional record, 24 victories, including 15 knockouts. Only two defeats with one draw. Fighting out of West Palm Beach, Florida, 
Introducing Kasim, the Dream Oma. And his opponent, fighting out of the red corner, wearing blue, official weight, 155 pounds. A perfect professional record, consisting of 20 bouts, 20 victories, including 12 knockouts. From Brooklyn, New York, the undefeated, secure Iron Horse, Cole! Uh, two seconds! Only two seconds! Shaku! All right, Shaku, Kasim, we went over the rules. I expect a clean fight, obey my commands, and protect yourself at all times. Touch him up, and let's get popping. Is Uma as vulnerable as he seemed against Clem? Is Powell up to this big occasion in his career? Well, it seems the general consensus of most of the local people that I've spoke to, Larry, has been that they feel that Uma has an edge because of the pressure that he's going to apply, and they are not sure or confident that Tower will be able to handle the pressure that he's going to have put on him. But well, Powell with the height advantage and presumably with the stiffer jab will try to keep Uma at range. Uma, as I mentioned, a guy who often throws more than 100 punches per round will simply try to let his hands go and overwhelm Powell with activity. I mentioned the amazing convergence of star fighters between 147 and 160 pounds. Here is at least a partial list. Floyd Mayweather Jr., Oscar De La Hoya, Ricky Hatton, Shane Mosley, Kasim Uma, Winky Wright, Jermaine Taylor, Miguel Cotto, Corey Spinks, Carlos Baldemir, Antonio Margarito, Luis Felix Trinidad, he chooses to come back, Edison Miranda, huge puncher from Colombia coming up, Kermit Cintron, there are others who could conceivably be mentioned. Emmanuel, in the long history of the sport, do you think there's ever been this much talent in those three weight classes or in that no, area? No, I've never saw this much talent in the, where you say welterweight all the way to middleweight. And all of these guys are good fighters. And on any given day, any of them can beat each other. It's an amazing convergence of talent. Uma backing Powell up through the opening minute of the first round. Uma is fighting a very good fight at this stage. And, and it seems like he's being very effective right, in backing up Powell. You know, Uma has said that the, one of the biggest problems he's had in recent fight, in particular the fight where he lost to Kamazan, has been so much arguments and friction with his trainers. And before, I guess, Tim Witherspoon and Johnny Bumpers and everyone was arguing between rounds. So to avoid that, for this fight, he went back to the guy who's been with him, he said, more than anyone else. And that's been his old trainer, Mr. Luda Wafa. Luda Luda Wafa. And therefore, he won't have that problem in his corner. Well, it's certainly important, important for a fighter to have one voice to which to listen in the corner. Okay, and he's okay, chosen okay. the least well-known of all the people around him. Yes, but he says he feels more comfortable with him, but he won't have so much turmoil. So far, Powell has not been able to keep Uma away with his stiff jab. He's landed a couple of times, but of course, one of Kasim Uma's great assets in the ring is that he's He's watch difficult out, to hurt, free, even when out, you hit out, him flush. And a right, part of the supposition, of course, is that his outside the ring life has been so extraordinarily difficult that it's probably harder to hurt him in the ring than for other yes, fighters. and I think he draws strength on the drama that he's had in his outside life. Watch out, watch and out. that's more what you're fighting sometimes than just a fighter. Well, but for all of that, Carmazin had him down twice, and his last opponent had it down. So uh, he is vulnerable. Ten seconds. Good left hand over the top by Powell. Uma nods at him as if to say, that might have been your best punch of the round. Parmesan, I'm sorry, uh, Uma had a good round, but I thought Powell showed poise in that round. Easy, no one no go to back to Rooney, no good. If the guy come inside, he had the working fight. He walked in the ring fight, no that, that's no good, all right? The coach telling you right, you're stronger than him, and you're not putting authority on your jab and punch to the body. Why the guy, the guy coming? You know your pace. Don't rush in there, you know. 
I copy box count. The first round was something of a dabbing contest. Kasim Uma 15 out of 44 with the jab. Saku Powell 6 out of 39 with the jab. On that basis, Harold Letterman gives round one to Kasim Uma. Overall, Uma 21 out of 68. Powell 16 out of 61. Uma looks a little bit stronger and more buffed out in his body tonight than I've seen him in the past, Emmanuel. I think he looks stronger, but also seems like he seems to be more comfortable with the way the fight is moving, whereas Saku is landing a lot of clean punches, but seems like he's a little uncomfortable and a little edgy. Is Saku enough of a confident counterpuncher to spend the whole fight backing up like this? Well, he's going to find out tonight. At least we will find out because Oma's going to put pressure on him, I think, throughout this entire fight. And we know that he can punch all night long. But whether Saku can do that and maintain the tempo of the pace as it's going is a big question. Incidentally, along with the stronger looking body, it appears that perhaps Uma is limiting his punch count a little bit more tonight. Only 66 punches in the first round, perhaps trying to put a little bit more impact on each punch. I'm glad you mentioned that, because I thought it was just by imagination. But it seems like he's punching with more authority than he normally punches with. Good left hand by Powell. Another good left hook mixed in by Saku Powell. They call it a left cross, reminding you that, of course, both fighters are southpaws. Powell is hitting Uma with some clean shots. He's got to be able to show that he can have an impact with those punches in order for him to do business in this fight. Yeah, Powell, I think, is landing the cleaner, more effective punches. It just seems like that Uma just still seems to be more comfortable with the situation the way it is. And he's still putting a lot of pressure. And whether Powell can do it all night is the question. And it appears that there's a war of wills emerging about who's going to go forward and who's going to go backward. And so far, Uma is still winning that war of wills, standing his ground and forcing Powell most of the time to back up. That's a good point, John. Another example there as Uma is able to back Powell into the corner, despite the fact that Powell landed two good shots. It becomes clear Uma's going to stand his ground regardless of how much punishment he has to take. Yes, he is, and it seems to be very relaxed in there. Saku so Powell got in a straight left hand after the bell. Kasim Uma touches gloves as if to say, accident, I don't mind. Now let's take a look at a replay in regular speed just to determine was that last straight left hand by Saku Powell after the bell. Two punches after the bell. A right and a left. But again, Uma didn't mind. No, it was a middle of exchange and you couldn't do anything about that. 